Hey everybody, this is Aaron and I'm going to cover some basics of time alignment. What is time alignment and why do you need it? Simply put, time alignment is a means to delay one speaker so the sound of it arrives at the same time as another speaker does. Why do you need that though? Let's look at an example. In a home audio setup, you are normally between two loudspeakers, equidistant. Therefore, you are the same distance from the left speaker as you are from the right speaker. And because of that, what you get is a phantom center channel effect, meaning that if you have a soundstage in your music where a guitarist is on the left, a bassist is on the right, the drummer and the vocalist or the lead singer are in the center of that soundstage, that's what you would hear when you listen to your speaker setup. And in that case, these are some of the numbers that you would typically see. So your left speaker and your right speaker, again, are equidistant. They're each about a meter from you. And the time of arrival, which is, in other words, saying how long does it take from the sound to leave the speaker and come to your ear is roughly three milliseconds. And the amplitude is 96 dB. What happens if you were to sit off center like say in a car where you have no center drive unless you're like super rich or fancy or you're in your home audio setup and you got to move over because your dog came into the room and wanted to take the center seat. Now those distances have changed. You can see from the top values I provided the delta values. So what I mean is now that you've moved seats to the left your distance to the left speaker has decreased by about six inches. The time of arrival is a little bit sooner now. It's gone down by about a half a millisecond and its amplitude is a little bit more because you are physically closer to the left speaker now. The opposite effect happens with the right speaker. Since you move further away from it, the time of arrival, it increases. So it takes just a little bit longer to get to you and the amplitude has gone down. The effect of that is this. No longer do you have the phantom center channel. Now what you're hearing is most of the sound is coming from the speaker that you're nearest to. In this case, it would be the left speaker. And then you would also have other sounds somewhere sprinkled out throughout what used to be a pretty symmetric sound stage. And you can see that I've given you the numbers above at the top, just again for reference. Or in other words, it's like going from a soundstage similar to this, where you have everything spaced evenly, to some jumbled up crazy mess that's left biased. And this is very indicative of what happens when you're in a car. And you'd say, how do I get my phantom center channel back? Well, the answer is kind of straightforward, but it's also not. What you would use is time alignment, and level matching. The problem with level matching is that in order to do that, you have to have all of your speakers be either the same exact sensitivity or they've got to be in the same physical location. And, and a lot of times that doesn't happen, especially in a car. And they've also got to be on the same gain channel of your amplifiers. The good thing though, is that time alignment you can do, and it's pretty straightforward because it's based on a couple equations. Now you say, how do I use time alignment? Where do I get these values? What do I do with them? Well, I've got a website to help with that, that a good friend of mine, Robert McIntosh, helped me build. And I'm going to walk you through how to use that website. Now that I'm in my car, what I would do is measure from my listening position to each individual speaker with the tape measure. You don't have to be exact as long as you're within a couple inches of a mid bass driver, subwoofer, and within at least a half an inch of the tweeter, those values will be close enough. So I would start off measuring the right side. You can do this any order you want. I have a tweeter in the cell panel, and I have a mid bass in the door panel. And then the top dash corners is a mid-range. And then I would do the same thing also for the left side. Now that you've gone out to your car, 
and you've measured your distance from each speaker to your listening position, you'll go to my website, which is aaronsaudiocorner.com. You'll go to this time delay, click that. And from here, what you'll do is you'll enter those distances in. This website is meant to be straightforward and simple. There are some other things that I added, which could add complexity, but those are totally up to you. So for now, I'm going to go with a straightforward method and then I'll walk back and talk about some of the other things that I added. So let's say that you've got your distances. You go to my website, look down here. Do you have a three-way or a two-way setup? Let's say you've got a three-way active front stage. These are the values that I have by default. You would change these, type in whatever new values you have. And you do that for the other ones and then you would hit calculate. And then you notice down here, these are the values that you would put into your DSP in milliseconds. And I do want to note that these distances are all in inches. If you want to use Google to convert from one unit of measure to another, I'll leave that up to you. And that's it. That's about as straightforward as it can be, okay? But now walking back, I also allowed you the ability to adjust temperature and humidity. Truth be told, it doesn't make a big difference. And by big difference, I say in the extremes from the very, very low temperatures to the highest of high temperatures that you would typically be in, I'm seeing about 0 0.06 milliseconds of time delay difference between one setting versus another. And that's, uh, that's a couple inches. That's not much. Okay. But if you want to use that, you can, some people will, will really enjoy this. Personally, I think it's neat to have, but if you don't know these values, just stick with what's there. Going back to this, I allowed you the option to do two-way or three-way. If you were to click two-way, these would gray out. Another option I allowed is if you have a Pioneer setup or another setup like Pioneer where instead of using time delay in milliseconds, you enter the time delay based on the actual measured distance. My advice is if you had that option, just go with that option. You don't even need my website for that. That's the simplest method. However, I did do this for the purpose of some people like to have a little bit of extra room to pad. I just made the math a little bit easier on you. I took the maximum allowable by Pioneer and I subtracted off whatever values would be put in here. And then I tell you what to go and enter into your DSP. So if I click, this is a Pioneer setup, and then I go and click calculate, it changes the values down here. Now, one thing to note is I have half cycle and quarter cycle. Sometimes if your crossover is really, really low, you may not have enough delay for a subwoofer. So I've added the ability to either do that in a half cycle where you could just rotate the polarity by 180 degrees and that should net you roughly the same thing or a quarter cycle. These are just numbers to, to try out if you feel like what is provided here in the default for a full wavelength isn't quite working for you or you don't have the distance or, or time to make that up, okay? Most people won't have a problem with this and won't need either of these values. The other option that I added is crossovers. Now, I say it up here, you know, this is experimental, use at your own risk. The idea here is that high frequencies are very short in wavelength, a couple inches. Low frequencies are very, very long in wavelength, 10 feet to hundreds of feet, you know, depending on how low you go. And before we had variable delay, or I'm sorry, variable phase with DSPs or all pass with DSPs like most now provide, you didn't really have a way to rotate the phase angle for some of these long frequencies or, or these speakers that were playing long frequency, long wavelengths. And you needed some kind of means to, a, to adjust for the phase. So in lieu of not having variable phase, I said, okay, well, we'll just use time. So I allow you to go in and input your crossover points. And when you do that, what you would do is you would click the calculate button again and you would get really long values. So if I switch back over to actual measurements, oh, sorry, and click calculate. Okay. Now let's say I'm going to enter some crossover values. 4,300 for your, that's supposed to be mid range low pass. I'll update that and low mid or left mid base high pass would be 80. These are just typical numbers. So this is a right side speaker. 
and going to keep going and sub I'm going to say the low pass is at 80 and then I hit calculate you'll notice that some of these numbers especially the sub and the mid bass jump up a lot again that's an experimental thing some people told me they tried it and, and it worked wonders for them in general I would advise you just to stick with the standard measurements don't worry about adding crossovers in addition to that stick with the standard measurements get the standard delay call it a day use variable phase in your dsp to help you rotate the phase to get things to sound better now that you've got the values from my website that you need to enter into your dsp i'll show you what to do from there now this is pretty straightforward but for those of you who haven't done this before it might be helpful to see it one time there are two things about the helix in particular it can either do in distance mode or it can do delay mode if you're using my site to provide you with delay you would use delay mode if you want to skip using my site you actually can and that would be okay my feelings will not be hurt you can just go in distance mode personally for some weird reason i've always preferred to use delay mode but let's say that you just wanted to use distance mode you would go to channel I'm going to say my channel a is left tweeter I would go here and I would adjust the value until I got to what I needed it to be right here and then I would go to the next channel if it were mid-range for example I would go to here and you just use your slider and as you do that you are essentially setting your delays and I'm making up numbers here save you time or if you wanted to you switch over into delay mode. Now, actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to zero out all of these first. I'm going to go to delay mode now. And here, I'm just going to go, I'm going to use the scroller until I get to the values that I want. And that's kind of it. It's very straightforward, like I said. And with other DSPs, for example, the mini DSP, it is delay mode based, or the equivalent of delay mode where you actually enter in the time. Uh, the JL Audio piece has the ability, I think, to do both. So, like I said, some have both options. Some are one way or another. But use whichever one you're more comfortable with. And that's it for this portion. Now that you've completed your time alignment and level matching, you should have a setup that resembles something like this. Even though the sides relative to you at the listening position are not the same distance, you have matched the time of arrival and you have also hopefully matched the amplitude. And now you will have a nice phantom center speaker between the two loudspeakers. Or however many number of speakers that you have. Yay! Down here, moving the stage. Let's say that you've gone through all the steps. You've got level matched. You've already done this section up here with time delay. And you've got things lined up in time you've got a nice cohesive center image dead in the center of your car or, or dead in the center of your loudspeakers wherever it, it's appropriate for them to be but you personally just want this the vocalist to be right in front of you for whatever reason whether right or wrong that's what you want okay so what we would do here is we would say we're going to need to move the stage and it should say the center really but i'm going to need to move the center over six inches to the driver's side so these values down here now say left time delay, right time delay, left level, right level. These are what you adjust to what you already have in your DSP. So for left time delay, what you would do is you would take all of your left speakers and you would subtract one millisecond. And then on the right side, you would add one millisecond. On the left side speakers in level, you would add 1.29, which you're probably not gonna have. So 1.3 is something like that, it's close, close enough. And then the right side, you would do the opposite. And in theory, what that does is that gets your vocalist to move in front of you. You're not going to have a center, a, a very perfect center image anymore. But again, this it's a preference people like. Some people want to do that. I, I'm, I'm allowing you the opportunity to do that. And the final thing that I'll add is if you feel like this website has helped you out, saved you some time, maybe saved you some headaches, or provided you some entertainment, I've got this PayPal donate button click it. It'll open up PayPal. You can donate a couple bucks to me, just whatever you feel like is appropriate. 
any money that I get through donations is helping me pay for more test gear, more speakers to test, just anything like that. Hopefully I'll get enough to allow me to do some, some really fancy things in the future, but we'll see. And I just want to tell you all, I appreciate it. And I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you later. Peace.